Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. On today's feature, we will uncover the takeoff and recovery operation of the Navy's flight deck and how the pilots perform the challenging task. So basically, it just takes a little more skill than doing a normal landing because you're landing to something that's actually moving. The amount of calculation, skill, and precision to land a high-speed jet fighter can be challenging. But trying to land it on a moving, narrow, and short runway can seem like an impossible feat. So how do these pilots land their aircraft on the moving naval bases in the middle of the ocean? The U.S. Navy has 11 aircraft carriers in its fleet, each accommodating anywhere between 60 to 90 aircraft operating from its flight deck. The Mammoth vessels are designed to accommodate and complement aircraft operation, including its storage, maintenance, and more importantly, the flight takeoff and recovery operation. There is very little margin for error in its flight deck operation, as the pilots only have about 300 feet of runway to work with. Known as carrier-based aircraft, there are only a few that have been built to operate on the aircraft carrier. The F-18 Hornet, Super Hornet, F-35C, the E-2 Hawkeye are some of the aircraft equipped with sturdy landing gear to withstand the impact of the catapult launch bar and the arrested landing hook of the aircraft carrier. After the harrowing and exhilarating takeoff challenge, the pilots go straight into their mission. But what awaits them at the end is returning to the aircraft carrier and landing the aircraft on a very short runway. From the island on the flight deck, the Flight Control Center coordinates the aircraft within a five-mile radius of the aircraft carrier. They will give the clearance and assist the pilots with their approach. The landing signal officers help guide the pilot using radio communication and lighting on the carrier's deck. The pilots use these lights to see if they're on the right approach. The pilot aims to land and snag one of the arresting wires laid out across the runway with the tail hook fitted to the aircraft. Also known as the well-crossed deck pendant, the cables are made of sturdy, high tensile woven steel that is about 35 millimeters thick. The cables are connected to hydraulic cylinders that absorb the aircraft's propulsive energy. This system is able to reduce the speed of the aircraft from about 140 miles per hour to a complete halt within two seconds. Recent technological advancement has made this whole process more automated and more manageable for some aircraft. One of the biggest things that makes the F-35 so nice to land aboard the aircraft carrier are the flight controls. We have integrated direct lift control. So uh, what that means is we move the control services a lot more and by doing so, we take a lot of the workload away from the pilot and uh, therefore put it on the jet and are able to, to land um, a lot more consistently aboard the aircraft carrier with it. The pilots operating from an aircraft carrier have to battle a number of uncontrollable elements. There's, of course, the uncertain weather element that can affect the aircraft's maneuverability. The pilots are also required to carry out missions regardless of the time of day. So, one can only imagine the difficulty trying to perform takeoff and recovery during night operations. Sure. 
prior to operating in the open seas, the pilots spend numerous hours in simulator training, as well as landing field bases designed to replicate the flight deck operations of the U.S. Navy's vessels. Aircraft with short vertical takeoff and landing capabilities, such as the AV-8 Harrier and the F-35B, is operable from aircraft carriers and amphibious assault ships. The aircraft uses directed jet thrust to vertically lift off, land, or hover over a surface. Not as elaborate of an operation as the aircraft carrier, the flight deck of the amphibious assault ship is equipped to accommodate the flight operation of VTOL-capable aircraft, like the Harrier and F-35B, as well as helicopters and tilt-rotor aircrafts, such as the V-22 Osprey. They provide the means to deliver, command, and support all elements of the Marine Landing Force by air, and in some vessels, includes amphibious crafts. The pilot's main challenge is trying to precisely land their aircraft on the allotted and limited slot while battling the surrounding weather condition and other parked assets on the flight deck. You're listening to your crew chiefs in the back and making sure that, you know, your altitude's good and that you're not going to hit anything on the deck. The 41,500-ton vessel only has a flight deck that measures 819 feet by 112 feet. The length is only operable for aircraft like the Harrier AV-8 that is capable of short takeoff. The amphibious assault vessels are not equipped with a catapult-assisted takeoff barrier arrested recovery system, so the Harrier relies solely on its engines and four vectoring nozzles to propel itself from the short runway. And it is no surprise that only those with single-seat fast jet experience made it to the Harrier squadron. Both the aircraft carrier and amphibious assault ship are capable of accommodating helicopter operation on its flight deck. Other vessels like the destroyer and the littoral combat ships of the U.S. Navy are configured with helicopter landing deck facilities, along with the flight deck crew, to assist the pilot in its takeoff and landing operation. With the smaller vessel more susceptible to sea motion, the pilot can expect a rather bumpy landing when the weather is not on their side. Evidently, to pilot any aircraft to take off and land on the sea's moving runway is an arduous undertaking and is not for the faint-hearted. It requires focus, concentration, meticulous calculation, skill, and experience to ensure the aircraft lands safely on the vessel. And with a little luck with Mother Nature, it can be a very smooth landing.
that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.